Kevin, I was going to ask you, um, you know, HNDP, um, where do you see the use of digital twins being used to help improve the design process and efficiency from current workflows? Well, Dan, we just uh, we worked on a job this past, or I guess it was a few years ago now we started it, and it was in New York, and uh, we used design or iTwin design review as our kind of our BIM management or our BIM meetings because the project was completely a BIM deliverable. Um, we had sheets as still as our final deliverable in our contract, but we still had, we had a BIM, BIM deliverable as well. And uh, the entire project uh, track stations, power, drainage, uh, grading, bridges, everything was delivered uh, in 3d. So then we could go ahead and, have those kind of interdisciplinary reviews and uh, iTwin made it very, very convenient for that. We were able to track some of those issues that we found as we were going through that. And um, that was, it was very helpful to be able to have that tracking. And then obviously with design review, you can have another version come through as that version comes through, then you can compare those versions back and forth. So that was very handy. We have another project going on in the, Southern part of the southern part states and uh, where we're going to be working on the client side and uh, we'll ha be having a design builder. We'll be doing the hosting of the iTwin and we will be reviewing it via iTwin design review. But this time we will actually be on the client side and uh, we will be reviewing and commenting on their information that they post to iTwin. So a little bit different scenario there. I see. OK. OK. Definitely exciting to hear the use of design review and how it's helping you, uh, you know, uh, streamline the process there, uh, Kevin. Um, so Hatch, I know, is also on the forefront of digital design and uh, consistently delivers project on time and on budget. Uh, so um, I've uh, been working with Hatch as part of our plan design applications. So, um, and we could probably ask our Hatch colleagues here also that, uh, uh, what is the you know the biggest advantage that you see with these digital twins in, in your industries? Thanks, Thanks um, Yeah, I guess our uh, our data centric design goes back probably twenty years, where we where we really started out uh, quite simple, um, and really that's helped us build um, build up to what we're doing today in uh, in using tools like iTwin, uh, where we've really built our our common data environment around iTwin um, as one of the primary repositories for, for managing all content on our projects. Uh, really, I guess some of the things that we've been focusing on from day one is is minimisation of, of those classic deliverables, um, you know, reducing drawings as much as practical, um, using the data that's coming from the systems to drive downstream stream processes like, uh, you know, procurement um, and, and also um, Really, I guess one of the big areas that's helped us recently around iTwin is the is the collaboration side. Um, it's removing all the bottlenecks we used to have with sharing model content, um, you know, sending sending model uh, model extracts off to clients and to third parties. Um, we can now in real time provide access to that uh, that iTwin um, iTwin model. Uh, and a couple of recent experiences we've had on, on one particular project, um, we were able to to collaborate with not only uh, our clients, our uh, our contract partners, but also the client um, across four different continents at the same time in uh, in a sort of real time collaborative design reviews. But uh, also extending that to the work we've done around uh, uh, around virtual reality, um, where we've built a, a virtual reality. Um, program off the back of iTwin and we were able to uh, to similarly collaborate uh, in that virtual reality environment uh, using iTwin supporting it. So um, iTwin really is is enabling us to, to unlock a lot of um, real-time collaborative uh, workflow improvements um, from what we've done in the past. All right. I think that's really uh, uh, great to hear. And I think this is one of the feedback and uh, uh, that we also get. Uh, that the digital twins uh, are sort of helping in 
uh, bridging or removing that boundary of data handover is the same data, the real time data access that you get uh, for all the processes, so right data at the right time, uh, the, you know, is lending some advantages um, and definitely in overall uh, workflows. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if Jared has uh, anything else to, to add as well, but uh, he's uh, heavily involved in our, in our VR environment leading that initiative. You've said most of it, Andrew, but you know, to the point of a digital twin, it's an evergreen, right? It allows us to, like you say, our twin forms part of our CD and then part of that um, that related data is, like you said, it, it brings all that information to the fingertips of the user, whether it be accessed through a, you know, a web portal, um, through web design review, or through our VR environment, we've enabled or unlocked the potential for accessing that data, regardless of the medium. It's a data-centric approach, and through that connected information and that digital twin being evergreened, you know, our users, whether they be internal, external, like you said, Andrew, they have access to all those components if, through, through, through obviously strict role-based access control, but um, it enables the user to consume the appropriate data in real time to achieve their outcome and their business need, whether it be operations and maintenance through IoT, or whether it be an engineer out in the field trying to find a piece of equipment and all their related documentation through through our, through our, through our twin and the, the digital twin, we've um, connected all that data and, and brought that to the user's fingertips. So would you say access is more the, the biggest advantage you see as the digital twin, the industry from that? It, it's it's a big component, Dan. It's, it's related data, right? So because of the mm-hmm. digital twin being being data, documents, and and CAD, it's 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 broken down silos of information and brought it to the fingertips of the persona. Instead of being focused purely upfront in engineering, it follows it all the way through to operation and the maintenance and everything in between: construction, procurement, commissioning, you know, hazard analysis, site feedback, early engagement from people. On uh, virtual training is another classic example, right? Because it's a digital twin, people can go and reduce the risk by having exposure to the site and being made familiar with it in a virtual sense. No, I think Dan, one of the uh, one of the other advantages, um, and and this was really borne out in in some presentations we've done to clients, um, and clients could see the value is is the agnostic um, capabilities of mm-hmm. of iTwin as well. Uh, we're actually able to demonstrate um, you know, where we have a federated project with many different partners, um, all producing content in various different authoring tools. Um, we could truly, in real time, uh, consolidate all that information into a single federated model um, with all the intelligence. And, uh, and it was a very powerful example um, that, was, uh, that was real. Um, so that's, uh, that, I think, is, uh, is an enormous um, differentiator in delivering projects, uh, particularly the, the comp, some of the complex major projects that we deliver, uh, where you often are working with numerous um, external parties, whether they be vendors or, or specialist consultants. Uh, it's uh, it, often projects are very complex in that regard. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Andrew and, and Jared. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.